In August 2020, Kamala Harris was announced as Joe Biden's vice presidential running mate in the election. The announcement instantly pulled Harris further into the spotlight as it signified a historic first for the country. Here's the stunning transformation of Kamala Harris. Harris was born in 1964 in California to immigrant parents, according to the Los Angeles Times. Her mother was a scientist from India and her father was an economics professor originally from Jamaica. The two met while studying at Berkeley, where they both took part in the civil rights movement. As Berkeley side explained, Harris and her sister Maya grew up in a segregated Berkeley due to racist housing policies, otherwise known as redlining. One Berkeley historian described the community as an integrated community with families of various races, both middle class and poorer residents. However, Harris's parents ensured that she was raised in a counterculture environment that embraced diversity. For instance, she and her sister were exposed to the civil rights movement from an early age, which Harris believes helped her to become the politician she is today. Even before Harris was born, her mother, Shamala Gopalan, was both active in the civil rights movement and interested in learning about black culture, according to the Washington Post. A family friend of Gopalan explained, her Indian culture, she held on to that, but I think they grew up as black children who are now black women. In Harris's autobiography, The Truths We Hold, she explained her black sense of identity in more detail, saying, My mother understood very well that she was raising two black daughters. She knew that her adopted homeland would see Maya and me as black girls, and she was determined to make sure we would grow into confident, proud black women. She'd tell us, don't sit around and complain about things. Do something. So I did something. Harris's parents divorced in 1971 when Harris was still fairly young. After the divorce, Gopalan was granted custody of the couple's two daughters after a hard-fought custody battle, as Donald Harris revealed in an article for Jamaica Global Online. Kamala stayed in touch with her father and even visited his family in Jamaica. However, the majority of her sense of self comes from her mother. According to Outlook, Harris once said, she was the one most responsible for shaping us into the women we would become. While Gopalan was always keen to give her daughters a strong foundation in black culture, she was also careful to raise them with an understanding of their Indian heritage. Harris visited India where she was greatly influenced by her mother's father. In September 2019, Harris wrote in an Instagram post, morning walks with him made me who I am today, and it's why I'm proud to launch our South Asians for the People community. As a child, Harris was raised not only to appreciate her biracial heritage, but also to understand the importance of education. Harris told Berkeley Side, Growing up, the first question asked of me at the dinner table was, what did you learn at school today? Harris went on to explain that her first grade teacher made a significant impact on her approach to learning. She revealed, Mrs. Wilson had a profound effect on all of us and was deeply committed to her students. In a November 2019 Instagram post, Harris revealed that she kept in touch with Mrs. Wilson and even invited her to her law school graduation. Earlier in 2019, the senator announced on Twitter that she was part of a mural of women at Thousand Oaks Elementary School, where she was once taught by her beloved first grade teacher. Apparently, Harris got her start in politics at a very early age, and the story is captured in a children's book. The book is by Mina Harris, Kamala's niece, and is called Kamala and Maya's Big Idea, inspired by real events from Kamala and her sister Maya's childhood. According to She Knows, the two sisters had the idea to build a play area in the courtyard of their apartment building. When the landlord refused, Kamala wrote a letter and organized a troop of volunteers from the neighborhood children. Eventually, the girls were successful. Maya spoke to Glamour about their shared childhood, saying, We were always taught to stand up for ourselves, to stand up for others, to speak up. Harris eventually chose Howard University in Washington, D.C. for her undergraduate degree. According to the Washington Post, Harris chose Howard because she wanted to be surrounded by black students, black culture, and black traditions at the crown jewel of historically black colleges and universities. It was there that Harris no longer felt part of a minority. She explained, When you're at a historically black college or university, and especially one with the size and with the history of Howard University, it just becomes about you understanding that there is a whole world of people who are like you. It's not just about there are a few of us who many find each other. At Howard, Harris joined Alpha Kappa Alpha, the oldest historically black sorority. There, she made friends with people who became like family, as she told USA Today. As she once said, Howard very directly influenced and reinforced, equally important, my sense of being and meaning and reasons for being. After graduating from Howard University, Harris went on to obtain another postgraduate degree in law. 
She attended the University of California's Hastings College of Law, according to Forbes. Harris once recalled how she was leading a sort of double life at the time. Apparently, she was living with her sister Maya, who, at the time, was raising her newborn. While Harris has no children of her own, this experience of working full-time and helping to raise her niece may have helped her to understand the struggles that single mothers face. She gave Maya a shout-out for Mother's Day on Instagram, saying, "...one invaluable gift she's given me is to show me what a phenomenal mother looks like." Harris has always been proud of her black heritage, but it took her a little while to speak publicly about her mother's Indian heritage. As The Washington Post pointed out in 2019, Many of Harris's close friends didn't initially realize the senator was of Indian descent. The executive editor of India Abroad explained, "...it's only been in the last year or so that she's really come out and embraced this part of her heritage." One activist for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders also commented on how Harris began to really embrace her Indian roots in 2018 and 2019, saying, "...I'm so glad she has discovered her Indianness. It's sudden, but I absolutely love that it's happening." It's not something she has exhibited over the years. Harris met fellow lawyer Douglas Emhoff on a blind date that was set up by a mutual friend, according to NBC News. According to her autobiography, Emhoff was pretty much head over heels after the first date. She explained, "...the morning after our first date, Doug emailed me with a list of his available dates for the next couple of months. According to Harris, Emhoff's email said, "...I'm too old to play games or hide the ball. I really like you, and I want to see if we can make this work." And it worked. In 2014, the couple got married. Harris went on to describe the multicultural ceremony in her book, writing, "...in keeping with our respective Indian and Jewish heritage, I put a flower garland around Doug's neck, he stomped on a glass." When Harris and Emhoff got married in 2014, he already had two children from a previous marriage, and Harris became their stepmother, as she explained to Elle. Cole and Ella, Emhoff's children, were welcoming and friendly to Harris from the beginning. Harris shared, "...they are brilliant, talented, funny kids who have grown to be remarkable adults. I was already hooked on Doug, but I believe it was Cole and Ella who reeled me in." According to Harris, the children decided to call her Mamala instead of stepmom. "...certainly, vice president will be great. But Mamala will always be the one that means the most." Over the years, the family has reportedly become incredibly tight-knit. Harris is now friends with Emhoff's first wife, and they even used to attend Ella's swim meets and basketball games together. In terms of Harris's career, she's risen through the ranks pretty quickly. After becoming a lawyer in 1990, she became an assistant district attorney in the Alameda County Prosecutor's Office. In 2003, she became the district attorney of San Francisco, becoming the first black woman to ever have the role. In 2010, she won the election for California Attorney General by a margin of just 0.8 percent according to Politico. During her time as district attorney and attorney general, Harris received both praise and criticism for her approach to the criminal justice system. As Vox points out, her prison diversion program and her racial bias training program for police officers were one-of-a-kind reforms. However, law professor Laura Bazelon claimed in the New York Times, "...Harris did not barter or trade to get the support of more conservative law and order types. She gave it all away." Still, Vox explained, "...Harris's supporters argue that these criticisms sell her short. In 2016, Harris became the first Indian-American United States senator, beating out the experienced Loretta Sanchez, according to Business Insider. The Los Angeles Times commented that her win was a hugely significant step towards equal representation in U.S. Congress. Her victory came at a monumental time in U.S. politics. At her victory party, her supporters were apparently watching the TV as Trump edged his way closer to presidential victory. Harris used her victory speech as an opportunity to rouse her supporters for the coming years under President Trump. She said, "...when we have been attacked and when our ideals and fundamental ideals are being attacked, do we retreat or do we fight?" I say we fight. This moment in Harris's past marked only the beginning of her campaign against Trump. Just three short years after becoming a U.S. senator, Harris began a campaign to become the President of the United States. According to CNN, her campaign started off promising but turned difficult when she failed to gain traction with voters, lagging behind other candidates in both fundraising and the polls. Joe Biden ultimately succeeded in becoming the party's presumptive nominee, and later in 2020, Biden announced that Harris would be joining him as the Democratic vice presidential nominee. Now let me introduce to you, for the first time, your next vice president of the United States, Kamala 
Harris. The announcement signified yet another monumental achievement for Harris and another first for America. Harris became the first person of Asian descent and the first black woman to appear on a presidential ticket in the country's history. As the New York Times noted, the historical announcement was reportedly well received by Jamaicans and Indians around the world. For instance, one Indian political commentator said that Biden's choice for VP was a quote, triumph of diversity and democracy. While Harris's presidential campaign for 2020 was unsuccessful, her place on the Democratic ticket shows that her political career is just getting started. Several political commentators have already suggested that Biden is gearing up for a 2024 campaign that sees Harris at the helm of the Democratic ticket. Some have even compared the vice presidential nominee with another history-making politician, Barack Obama. However, according to the Washington Post, Harris has no wish to be compared to former President Obama. In fact, she apparently once said in an interview that she would prefer to be judged on her own merits. Looking back at Harris's powerful, progressive upbringing, it's clear where her fierce sense of identity comes from. One thing's for sure, as her career continues, she's sure to continue making history and creating her own legacy. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more list videos about your favorite hot topics are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.